present with his attorneys and the prosecutors are present as well. We are outside the presence of the jury. Ms. Higgs, how would you like to, how would you like to proceed? Your Honor, we have a number of witnesses that won't be able to come back due to work travel um, and other obligations next week, but we have a number that are, so we are asking to proceed via video testimony with regard to those witnesses. And that's pursuant to Rule 15 of the Colorado Rules of Criminal Procedure? That's correct, Your Honor. And the rule requires, I think, that a subpoena, that the court direct the party seeking videotaped testimony um, to issue a subpoena. I'm assuming these folks are under subpoena. When they're all also present. Okay. All right. Do the people have any objection to proceeding in this fashion? No, we don't, Your Honor. Okay. And, of course, everyone understands that the jury will not be able to submit questions to these witnesses. But without objection, we will proceed as requested by the defense. How many witnesses do you have, Ms. Higgs, that you would like to um, have provide videotape testimony today? Seven. Seven? Okay. Or some of them are currently just making their way to the courthouse. Um, we do have one person that's present currently. Okay, do you want to start with that? We can start with that person if you're ready. Ms. Brady? I'll be Scott Zoldy. Okay. All right. And so do you want to turn on the video camera and then have you, um, and then call that witness so there's a full um, recording of it? Video taper went to go get our witness. Okay. So. Any information on in the uh, exhibits D TR 234 and 236? Your Honor, I haven't had time to check. Okay. While well, we're waiting, Your Honor, if yeah. I may, I have some CDs that I would like to have as court exhibits. It's CTR 103, 104, 105, 106. CTR 103 was the first version of the uh, guilt phase, people's PowerPoint. 104 is the final version. And then 105 is the first version of the phase one PowerPoint. And then 106 is the final version. OK, thank you. We've given copies of these discs to defense counsel. All right, thanks. <coughs> and Ms. Higgs, just uh, for your information, Exhibits D-TR-234 and 236 were admitted through Sandra uh, Becker, uh, who um, apparently lived in the same neighborhood as your client when he was in second grade. And I, and I believe the two exhibits are two photographs.
Ms. Nelson, are you anticipating uh, submitting your tender instructions for phase two uh, before the weekend? Yes, Your Honor. I was actually going to bring that up with you. Uh, it was my intention. I stayed up late last night trying to get them together to file by the end of the day today, and I think I'll be able to do that, especially given the, the events this morning. So, Thank you. I appreciate you doing that. that that's very helpful. Okay. Ms. Brady, call your next witness, please. Your Honor, um, the defense calls Scott Zoldi. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Could I have you raise your right hand for me so that I can administer an oath? Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please be seated. <coughs> Could you please tell us your full name and spell your first, middle, and last names? Uh, my name is Scott Michael Zoldi. That's Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Zoldi, Z-O-L-D-I. Ms. Brady, you may proceed. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, can you please tell us uh, how you're employed? Uh, I'm a vice president of analytic science at a company called FICO. We develop uh, fraud analytic models, models that basically detect credit card fraud. Credit card fraud? Correct. And uh, what state do you work in? Uh, California. All right. Have you had the opportunity to know a man by the name of Robert Holmes? Uh, I have, yes. Uh, can you please let us know how you know him? Uh, Bob and I both worked uh, first at HNC Software, and which was later acquired by FICO um, in, the, I think it was the year 2000, uh, 2000 or 2001, up through uh, the year 2013. Okay. If you wouldn't mind, would you pull that? That microphone can come right up to your mouth there. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. So you uh, worked with Mr. Holmes in, in, I'm sorry, for approximately how many years? About 12 years. 12 years. All right. Uh, did you ever have an opportunity to meet Mr. Holmes' family? I did. Can you tell us uh, the circumstance where you met his family? Um, so uh, I had uh, my teams over to my house uh, one or two times um, for uh, like a team picnic where team members would come and they would, they'd come to the house. I was also at their residence uh, for a dinner uh, with my family and their family. In approximately what years would that have been? Uh, the dinner was probably around 2004. Right. And what about the picnic? Picnics were probably around this, the same time periods, maybe one prior to 2004 and then one a year or two later. Okay. Did you have an opportunity uh, to meet uh, James Holmes? I have, yes. And do you recognize him here in the courtroom? I do. Uh, can you tell us your observations of James Holmes? Um, when I met with, uh, with the family for dinner, for example, um, you know, James got along very well with his mother and father. Um, we had a great uh, dinner um, together. Um, he seemed very friendly and joked around with his dad in particular. Um, my other observation, a little bit awkward potentially, um, like, like most boys of his age, and he was a teenager then. Um, but other than that, uh, appeared very normal to me. Okay, nothing unusual between him and the other members of his family? Not that I observed. Okay. Now, in the uh, time that you knew uh, the Holmes family, uh, did Bob Holmes ever express concern about his son? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Hearsay. Can we approach? Yes.
Okay, the objection, the objection is sustained on hearsay grounds. Mr. Zoldi, um, did you ha get the impression uh, that Bob Holmes in the early part of uh, the year 2012, was he concerned about his son? Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearsay response. I don't think it does, Your Honor. If you can answer the question based on observations without relying on anything that Bob Holmes said to you, then you may answer the question. If you have to rely on something that Bob Holmes said to you, then you cannot answer the question because that would be hearsay. Okay. Um, in, in around the, the year 2012, um, Bob needed to take time off from work. Uh, he was concerned. Uh, he needed to come to Denver, and he needed to um, needed to visit his son because they had lost contact with Jimmy. In the early part of 2012? Correct. And you gave him that time off in order to do that? Yes, at least one or two times I, I did that. Okay. Uh, any time that you had contact with James Holmes, did you ever see him be mean or disrespectful to anyone? I have not, no. Uh, would you consider him a uh, quiet person? Yes, quiet and, uh, you know, as I said before, a, a bit awkward in the interactions, but always I found him to be, have a good sense of humor and, and interacted well with people. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Is there any cross-examination, Ms. Tish McGuire? Good afternoon, Mr. Zoldi. Hello. It's actually morning. Oh, good morning. I apologize. Um, do you recall if the defendant's father actually came to Denver to see the defendant? Uh, I believe he did, right? Because he took the time off and went to Denver. That's what I was told. That's what you were told, but you don't know that he actually came to Denver. Is that true? You, that's outside your knowledge. I never saw a plane ticket. It was his personal trip. And the last time that you were able to observe the defendant was probably approximately nine years ago? R roughly, yeah, in, in, his, in his high school years, yes. And do you know when in 2012 the defendant's father took time off from work? I, I don't know the exact time. I believe it was in the summer. No further questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Is there any redirect? May this witness be released from his subpoena, Ms. Brady? You may. Any objection? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right, sir, thank you. Thank you. Call your next witness, please. Defense calls Martin Barrett. Your Honor, we're going to change that. We're going to call Ina Mastson, please. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry. That's all right. You hurt my knee. <laughs> oh. Could I have you raise your right hand, please, so that I can administer an oath? Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of law? that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please be seated.
Could you please tell us your full name for the record and spell your first, middle, and last names? Ina Piri Maston. Sorry. I-N-A P-I-R-I-E M-A-S-T-E-N. <laughs> Ms. Higgs, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Maston. Good morning. Um, can you tell us where, where you live? I live in Rancho Penasquitas, which is a suburb of San Diego County. Okay. What do you do for a living there? I'm an accountant. And where do you work? Um, I work part-time at the church. <laughs> I have clients that I service. What, uh, what church are you referring to? Penasquitas Lutheran Church. How long have you been working at Penasquitas Lutheran? A little over three years. Prior to working there, did you also attend that church for many years? I did, for over 20 years. And you continue to attend it while you're working there? I do. All right. Um, do you know a family, the, the Holmes family? I do. I know Arlene and Bob Holmes. Okay. Do you also, you've also um, met on a couple of occasions James Holmes, is that right? Um, I have. Um. I would like to ask you um, how it is that you came to meet um, Arlene Holmes. Um, Arlene and I met through church, um, through several events that we had there, and then we both joined a book club that meets every two months. And additionally, about four years ago, we carpooled off and on for about three years to work a Mac. When was it that you first met her? Um, about ten years ago. Okay. And that was... Um at that time when you first met her, it's my understanding that uh, she was attending the church as well as her two children. Is that right? Um, yes. Okay. Yes, they both were. And um, are you aware um, that uh, James, and, and just so we're clear, I see you looking here at council table at him. This is James Holmes that you knew? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, are you aware that he was confirmed through that church? Um, I don't believe he actually was. Okay. Um, I think I thought that he was, but he really wasn't. Okay. Um, do you recall him attending church much in his sort of teenage, later teenage years? Um, not really. I mean, off and on. Yeah. You know, I might see him and his sister around, but more Arlene all the time and, and Bob. Okay. More so in the last few years. Um, when... Uh, when you were carpooling with Arlene and going to book club with Arlene, can you describe um, what your impression was her, of her uh, with regard to her family and her children? Um, you know, we would just talk about everyday things and everyday life, and mm -hmm. part of that, you know, includes your family. And it was pretty much um, pretty normal, you know, just kids growing up and exploring life and going off to college or, you know, other, pursuing other things in their life. So nothing out of the ordinary. You know, the thing that my other friends weren't experiencing with their children at that time in their life. Mm -hmm. Did she appear to you to be, cons to, to, to show appropriate concern and love for her family? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. She was very, they both were very involved in their kids' lives and um, definitely, yeah. Okay. When you say they both were very involved, do you mean both Bob and Arlene? Yeah, both Bob and Arlene. And, um, you know, they would go the extra mile um, for some things. Like, for example, one is that um, Arlene's daughter wanted to try out for American Idol. <laughs> and so she took a whole weekend off and drove up to Pasadena and spent time with her daughter doing all of that. That, you know, that was a big commitment, I think, as a parent. Okay. Um, you also, uh, I understand... You have every year open house Christmas parties at your home. I do. Um, did the Holmes family ever attend those parties? Um, yeah. Uh, Bob and Arlene come on a regular basis and from time to time. Um, you know, one or both of the, the children would come. Okay. And when the children would attend that, was that um, a number of years ago? Um, well, yes. Yes, it was a number of years ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did James ever come with his parents to your home? Oh, uh, yeah. I do re recall him coming at least once, if not twice. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was your impression of him when he attended those open house parties? Um, you know, a shy, reserved young man, but not uncomfortable in, in a social setting. Okay. Um, do you recall what years it was? that th Would that have been before he went off to college when he was Yeah, still? definitely. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. 
And he would kind of stick around with his parents the whole time. Is that reasonable um, to say? You know, I'd say a lot of the time, but not all of the time. Okay. Because we had, um, we have like food everywhere, inside and outside of the house. And so people mill around. It's truly an open house. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, he would wander around a little bit and gather food and, and all that. So, you know, I didn't notice that he like was stuck next to them the entire time. Okay. Um, just a minute, and I'll be right back with you. Have you continued to um, be friends with the Holmes family? Absolutely. Even to this day? Yes, even to the day. Okay. And it is, is it important for you to be here to, to support the entire Holmes family? Today? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. We wanted to make sure everybody understood how much we support the family as uh, individuals and as a community. Okay. Um, it's very important. And that includes James, is that Absolutely right? includes James, yeah. Thank you. Is there any cross-examination? I don't have any questions for this witness, Your Honor. All right, may this witness be released from our subpoena? Yes, she may, Your Honor. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Ma'am, thank you. Thank you. So your next witness, please, Ms. Brady. Your Honor, if we could take a few moments for the next witness to be here. Yes. Thank you. Governor, the next couple witnesses are making their way into the courthouse, so if we maybe could take just a short break until they get here. Sure. Thank you. You bet. How long? How long? 10, 15 minutes? 15 minutes? 15 minutes. Okay. Great. You bet. We'll be on break. The court will be in recess. Thank you.